Good morning. It's Wednesday Wisdom, and I'm back in Sydney. <laughs> oh, Shell Harbour, and my cat's decided she doesn't. She's she's um been missing me for. A, I've been away for a week, so she's she doesn't want to let me go. <laughs> it's like, where are you? <laughs> don't leave, Mum. Yeah, don't leave. <laughs> So uh, we're here with the beautiful Michelle Bloom, and um, good morning, Michelle. How are you? Good morning, Liz. How are you going? I'm good. I'm good. It's not. We we're just talking about it. Um, it stopped raining here, but it's still dark and gloomy. So, uh, but but it's raining up your way, I hear. <clears throat> it is, and uh, but even worse, that it, the rain's not so bad. But it is cold. It's like Melbourne cold, which is where I'm originally from, and so I'm yeah. not used to the Gold Coast being 14 degrees. And wearing yeah. three layers of clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy weather, isn't it? Hey, so, yeah. um, so today we're talking about um, uh, investing and not being stuck on that on that age pension, which is something that most people that that's what happens, right? T- yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you do, so we can jump into it. Sure. So I am a financial advisor and a wholesale superannuation specialist, um, as well as investing uh, outside super. Um, And I'm also a money mindset coach and money uh, breakthrough business coach. Um, That side is more for female entrepreneurs, um, but there is also a pattern of self-employed women really struggling through uh, retirement. Yeah. And unfortunately, they are the divorced single women are the fastest growing demographic demographic of homelessness in Australia. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Divorced or single divorced women, and single. divorced and single, yeah. are the fastest growing homeless. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, you could say single or divorced because if you're yeah. divorced, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. single. Um, yeah. But I guess the divorce comes into it because they've, you know, or if they've taken time off from um, having children, there's the uh, the the uh, wage gap, um, yeah. things like that. Yeah. And then if they um, can't afford or choose not to buy a home again, when they get to retirement age, then they just don't have enough superannuation to support themselves. They may be renting now um, through a variety of different reasons, which we can talk about. Um, yeah, but there are some things that you can do to actually rectify that, which is what we're going to be um, talking about today. But yeah, and self-employed women, that number's even higher because as we know, as female entrepreneurs, we're sort of investing in ourselves, investing in the business, cost of living, um, left the yeah. job. And if you're new in business, you may not be making enough to contribute to super. Um, yeah. And sort of living for the moment and not making retirement. Not preparing. Preparing <laughs> for the future. And not only that, you know, like like I've just turned fifty, and um, or not just, but you know, and and I'm <laughs> I'm still fifty at the moment, and it's really interesting because, you know, we should be thinking about this sort of stuff in our thirties and forties, and we're just not. We're we're still in that youthful stage of our lives where we think, oh, we've got plenty of time. Um, you know, we we don't need to worry about that now. You know, and we've got these dreams and aspirations of the future. And um, if things um, shift and change in our lives or in the economy, for example, mm-hmm. um, yeah, where you know you you've got what another twenty years if you're lucky. Um, actually, not twenty years. How well, how old is retirement these days? Sixty is when you can access your um, pension, uh, your superannuation. So that's your preservation age to meet your conditions of yeah. release. But age pension is sixty-seven. So if you're in your thirties and forties, a lot of people will, or a lot of uh, women will, may still be in um, in jobs working for somebody else. Sometimes they don't start the self-employed journey until they're in their forties. And in thirties, you sort of uh, you might be having kids, you might be saving for a mortgage or paying off the mortgage. And in your thirties, that's okay. Because you've still got plenty of time for your retirement. If you're um, if you're on PAYG, you know, just getting your normal contributions, you don't necessarily need to be doing the extra steps. Um, what did you just say? You're in, on PYOG. 
EAYG pay as you go, meaning you're an oh. employer and your yeah. uh, your boss is paying your taxes and your superannuation for you. So it's compulsory. Um, yeah. So you're going to be getting something put away. And because you've got such a long time until retirement, um, just making sure that you're, you're living okay and um, paying down a mortgage or saving for a home, those steps are okay. But when you're in your 40s, that's the most expensive part of the lifestyle. When you're raising kids and kids' expenses, putting them through education, you've got holidays, you're trying to pay down debt, possibly even getting an investment property or, or something like that. But then from 50 onwards, if you have been contributing all that time, you want to start looking at other ways that you can maximise it if you are behind where you should be. Yeah. Because you've still got then, uh, you know, 10 to 17 years, depending if you're going to be self-funded. So 50 to 60 is 10 years. But if you are not going to have enough to retire at 60, then you've got to have another seven years until the age pension kicks in. And it depends on your age. So I'm about to turn 51. Chances of, of there even being a pension in another 17 years is yeah. unlikely because they yeah. keep moving the goalpost. Yeah. So instead of at 67, it might be 70 or 75. Yeah. And the asset testing is coming down. That means how much you're allowed uh, to have outside your primary residence in order uh, to actually qualify for um, a pension anyway. So the aim is to be self-sufficient so that regardless what happens, um, you can have that that peace of mind. Well, not only that, you know, like I, I know people like my mum was on the age pension and, um, you know, it's not it's not really survivable money, right? <laughs> like there's, um, there's you, you only just get by and, um, you know, prices are going up everywhere and, as you said, it's it's not um something that we need you know we can think of as security in our as we get older so yeah. Yeah. so tell us a bit about it like what 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 is your um what do you you know how do you support women with that yep so there's a couple of different um options if you if you are self-employed um by contributing to your super and actually making it a priority to put something away then you're getting a double tax deduction so you're reducing your company tax and how much you're going to have to pay the, the government from out of your, your profits from your business. So you're getting a, a 30% tax saving there. Then on your PAYG, um, so how much you're actually paying yourself as an income. So hypothetically, let's say uh, somebody's business is turning over 150000 and 50000 of that is um, expenses. Okay, so um, by contributing to their super, that would reduce those expenses even more. So let's say they're putting 10 grand. Now that's 60,000 that they're not going to have to pay company. Um, yeah. tax. Sorry. And then, so let's say uh, the income that they're paying themselves is now 90,000 that they're going to pay income tax on, the same as any other employee, being an employee of your business. Then you're also saving um, that tax deduction as well. So you're getting a double, double tax deduction. So if your margins are good enough, and obviously the goal of being in business is to be making a profit, if your yeah. margins are good enough, you can be uh, reducing your taxes by doing that. You can also salary sacrifice. So if you're on 100 grand a year is what you were paying yourself, um, then your contributions would be 10% of that or, or 10,000 per year going in. But you're able to salary sacrifice up to 27,500 per year meaning you can put in another 17500 on top of that, again, reducing your taxes and your company taxes. Again, if you have the margins to be able to do that and if you're behind. So that's salary sacrifice. You can um, also look at wholesale super if you have um, 100000 or more as an individual. And the way wholesale super works is the industry funds most people don't understand what happens, I guess, behind the scenes. Um, so the industry funds actually outsource the investing side of their business to external wholesale fund managers in each different asset class. So your super is invested into Australian and international shares, um, some Australian properties, some fixed interests and some cash. So the industry funds outsource that and they, you, they keep a slice of the profits, basically. So like any other wholesale business model, buy, wholesale, sell, retail, like Coles or Woolies, 
Yeah. By removing the middleman, you get to keep between three and five percent more of those returns. So okay. to give you an example, instead of the industry funds, the average return on a five-year average on a balanced option, um, which is the sort of the middle one, it's not growth or high growth. Um, the average return is 8.2 or 7.2 to 9.2% as the highest with Australian Super, compared to wholesale is 13.99. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're getting a lot more growth, for your return. Yeah. yeah. And with compound growth, that can add between 200,000 to 600,000 to your retirement nest egg purely from where your super is sitting. Okay. So you can only qualify if you have 100000 and you can only access it via a um, licensed and approved financial advisor. Um, and, yeah, so with the compound growth, that would um, um, give you a, a higher return. It's also actively managed rather than passively managed. So you would have noticed your super went down in co during COVID and the industry funds either got a small return of 2% or a loss of 2% for the industry funds whereas the wholesale st still did 10.5, because it's actively managed, we were able to adjust the underlying investments and portfolio to still return. So for example, Australian and international shares went down, but Australian property went up. So we became more heavily weighted in property and therefore still got uh, a great return during COVID compared to the industry funds. Yeah, right, okay. So it's, it's, it's adjusted depending on what the market's doing. We've just readjusted it again because now property um, the property funds have gone down a little bit because of the cost of labour and materials. So now that fund's not doing as well. Therefore, we then um, reduced the amount that was in there and have upped things that, are, uh, that we're all feeling now, such as uh, increased energy bills, food, uh, petrol, um, the batteries that charge the solar, with the batteries that charge the people's house solar and things like that. So have now invested into more of those managed funds because they're the areas that are currently booming. So yeah, it's right. managed rather than passively managed. Okay. And, and they have the same, um, everything else is the same. So you're still, you're still getting, um, you know, um, a tax, See, all of this is like totally, totally over my head, I tell you. As an energy healer, you know, like, and so I, I listen to you and I'm like listening to what you're saying and going, okay, okay. Uh, but it's so important. I, I just want to say, you know, like I'm listening going, yeah, I really need to talk to you. <laughs> but the thing is, it's, you know, if, you know, to going back to, being able to talk from a point of view of being um, a successful entrepreneur or, or, you know, living the life you love, which is what I um, teach, you know, is, is being a creator. Yeah. Then it's not just about living in the etheric and living, you know, like your day to day and being in the moment. It's actually preparing <clears throat> for the future and, and understanding what you're doing on the planet. You know, you're understanding the finances. I'm, I'm, um, just about to move to a company, actually. And so, uh, you know, I'm having to move into that understanding of I should have done it a while ago. And so, you know, having to understand all of this language and, you know, getting the right people on board to make sure that, you know, you, you're putting the right pot, you know, you've got your right um, finances in the right order and everything like that. Yeah. Um, so that you can. Um, live with freedom and you can live with, you know, stress-free and you know that you're able to, you know, um, create the life you love and all of those things while there's other stuff going on in the background, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's matching that, that spiritual and that creative side with the practical because yeah. although, um, you know, as you said, you're an energy healer and I also do money mindset coaching and all that sort of stuff. So there's that side as well. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, we're still business owners. Yes, yes. You can have an impact. Yes. And, and do fantastic in the world, but you don't want the sacrifice. We're not nuns 
and no. have to, <laughs> and yeah, then have to right. <laughs> yeah, and, and have to you know give it all away and and um, and live in poverty in order to feel good about the work we do. Um, and, we still and, want to be comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that I've learned as I've evolved and maybe just you know wisdom of getting older as well is you know um, one of the things that law of attraction. Um, you know, the, the stuff that I've learned before, she is so needing cuddles with her. Um, uh, one of the things about that whole process is, you know, just be abundant, just be abundant. Well, it doesn't actually give you the details of how to live with that abundance and how to maintain that abundance and how to, you know, like I, I actually have gone through um processes where you know like lots of abundance and so I spent it all you know because I'm still in a pattern of of poverty mentality even though I had the the money and and being able to get out of that and create a structure um so that I'm I'm living and taking the steps towards what I need to achieve to be able to share the wisdom of how to create with other women you know that's my mission and so if I'm here to to live that mission out then I need to understand um, how to live on the planet with the abundance, you know, not, not just think of it as an energy. You know, money is, people say money is an energy. Well, actually, it's a measurement as well, right? It's a measurement of value. And yeah. so, you know, how you, um, what what's your integrity with that measurement of value? You know, like there's, yeah. there's um, a lot to it. So, so with these wholesale super funds, they still have all the rules that the others do with the tax department is where I was going because I didn't even know what I was trying to say before because my whole my whole energy went into freeze mode. <laughs> I had to come back into energy energy language so that I could talk to you again. <laughs> and that's why it's really important, you know, on that note, that's why it's really important to actually have people that understand that stuff you know like this is obviously your passion your role your mission is to support women in their finances and support women in understanding all of this and you can speak the language because it's it's what you know what you do right yeah and so can you share a little bit like like the importance of getting someone to um to support you in that sort of thing yeah, well, as I was saying, with the statistics being so you know terrible, um, and if you're renting, that's even worse because a, a, a single um, person who owns their own, own home outright needs about forty four thousand uh, a year, forty five thousand a year to to live comfortably. That's in today's numbers. That's without inflation, you know, going to be going up over the next few years. So they need forty four thousand to forty five thousand. Um, now, if they're not a homeowner. And they're renting. You need to add seventeen to twenty thousand, depending on where you live. And there's a rental crisis at the moment of of that happening. Mm. Um, I'm going through a shift at the moment where, after my divorce, so I'd, you know, been married twice, lost two houses, had to start from scratch six years ago, and I didn't want to buy a home again because, you know, in my late forties, didn't know with, whether I was going to live in Melbourne or. Um, uh, stay on the Gold Coast because I did go back to Melbourne after the divorce for two and a half years. I didn't want to buy a home again because I didn't want that debt hanging over my head and I was a single mother and saved that 200000 deposit on my own before I met the second husband and lost it all. So I yeah. developed a money mindset block of what was the point of working my butt off to only lose it all again. Yeah. And yeah. so I really shrunk for a couple of years. But yeah. now um, with the rental crisis going on up here, there's 30 to 40 different people going for a rental. Yeah. My attitude had been that, I know I'll just put my money into the, a personal investment account, which I'll tell you about in a moment, because that's how you can create money outside super. But to do that, but not buy. And numbers-wise, it would give me a greater return than buying a house um, on capital growth. The portfolio outperforms that. But now I have a new problem that there's a rental crisis. And that scares me because mm. it doesn't matter how much money I have, you know, because it doesn't matter if I'm earning 100000 to 300000 per year. If there's 20 other people there and if I'm a single income, they're going to choose a family 
perhaps with two incomes as security. So having enough money is no longer um, to be able to pay rent and even pay six months in advance. It is no longer a viable solution. So now I'm having to think, all right, I think I'm going to have to start looking at actually buying um, yeah. for that security because I don't want to be 70 or 75 or 80 having to, you know, have possibly having a rental sold from under me because the owner wants to sell and having to go for inspections. So there's been a shift there. So I think we need to stay fluid with our thinking. Yeah. Uh, as the world changes, we may have to change the way we um, think about things. Um, so before I forget what I was just saying about, um, so with the wholesale super, you, you do need 100,000 as a, a single, uh, as an individual to qualify for wholesale. But if somebody that's watching this has, and if they don't qualify, but let's say they do have a partner and their partner has um, even 50, 100,000, so therefore 150,000 as a couple, they would then qualify. So the person, so let's say there's a lady watching that's only got 50 and she says, well, I don't qualify. But if she has a partner and he has 100 or she has 100 and that's 150 combined, then yes, I could help. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can also have the exact same portfolio outside super, which is what I chose to do rather than buying a house. Um, so it's the same underlying investments. It just means that, uh, so the same returns, around 13.9% as a five-year average. But with a personal account, you can access it whenever you choose. So you fill in a form and within four to seven days, you can access that money. So that's about creating wealth outside super. Rather than having money sitting in a bank and getting a half percent cash rate, you could have that money in a personal account. Just to clarify, are you glazing over? <laughs> yeah, was I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I do need to talk to you, I think. <laughs> so you can have an investment account outside super and have yeah. that money working um, really hard for you at getting 14% rather than half a percent. Now, if you have your super with, so through BT, yeah, which is owned by Westpac. So if you've got your superannuation account with them, you, you can't touch that until you retire. But the personal account, you can touch at any time and it would be on your app and you'd have your two accounts. So that's good for creating wealth outside super. Then just prior to retirement, we move that personal investment into super so you avoid capital gains tax and move it into that thing. But you can access that money that's out when it's outside super whenever you choose. If you want to go on a holiday, buy a car, renovate the house, whatever. Yeah, um, so right. It's not, it's not locked away. Yeah, it's yeah. 14% or 13.5% more return than if you had cash savings in the bank. And that's where okay. I see a lot of women don't know how to invest, don't know, uh, don't necessarily want to buy an investment property. Uh, I have a lot of clients who may have had a divorce settlement and they've got a hundred or 200,000 sitting in the bank doing nothing, don't want to buy, don't know how to invest. So it just sits there and it's not working hard enough for them. Yeah. Now, if, if you have your super with BT, you can have a personal investment account with as little as 10,000. And okay. that's really important because if you were to buy an investment property, you're going to need, you know, your 5% or 10% or 20% deposit. Um, it's not shares or crypto, so it's nice, still and diversified and all that yeah. stuff. The point being you can get started with a lot less. Actually, it's 5000 now. Um, you can have a personal account with them. Um, so, therefore, it doesn't cost you, uh, you don't need a lot to get started is my point. Yeah, yeah. And so um, for those, and it's really interesting because as I'm sitting here, I'm thinking it's, it's interesting how... Um, you know, it, it is a language that that is not that's foreign to me, right? And and I'm aware of that, and so I'm pushing through that. You know, like I'm I'm doing my best to understand all of this um, at this time in my life, and um, you know, I've got I've got investments of my own that I've started um, a while back, and um, you know, various things that are going on, but it's still foreign language. And so I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I wonder how many women will actually even watch this um, interview because we don't even give ourselves the time to 
to listen to it. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're not encouraged. We're not well. We're not. Um, we're not forward thinking. Yeah. We're so caught up in problem solving, which is is one of the things that I teach my clients is, you know, creating is not problem solving and that's what the world's doing is problem solving. We're not forward thinking. We're not taught to create. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, if if someone wants to get onto you and we've, we've you know, got someone that came on and, and it's perfect timing for them and they're going, yes, I need to speak to Michelle as well. <laughs> How do people get in contact with you, Michelle? Sure. So they can either go through the, my business page is Michelle Bloom, the money mentor. Yeah. And my Facebook group, which has 500 lovely ladies in there is female financial freedom. And there's some posts in there that has um, one I did last week about frequently asked questions about wholesale super. And there's a link. Yeah. Bottom, um, they just have to drop retirement in the comments and they can book a 60 minute um, uh, worry-free retirement audit because most people don't even know if they're on track or off track and that there's that avoidance mentality of yes oh, that's I'm what I'm to, yeah I'm scared to find out yeah I'm way off track and there's nothing I can do about it I'd yeah. rather be, be oblivious and yeah yeah so um during that consult I will run the numbers to see if they're on track or off track as well as compare their current super funds uh, performance and fees um, and run those numbers side by side to see how much of a better position it would um, put them in. I tend awesome. to find a lot, a lot of women come from fear as well. Um, yeah. It's that women are so much more conservative um, yeah. than men. And yeah. so it's the better the devil you know mentality. Yeah. And coming from a place of fear. And I love the Robert Kiyosaki um, quote, the difference between a, um, a rich person and a poor person is the way they manage fear. Yeah, so a man will look at wow. that logically. Yeah, a woman will hang on to. Um, and I did a consult the other day, and she had approached me, uh, reached out wanting a, a, a consult, wanting advice how to put herself in a better position because she was aware she had nowhere near enough, but then is reluctant to accept the advice. She said, "Oh, you know, they say if it's um, if it's too good to be true, it probably is." Um, and I said, well, "Oh, wow! What a you know, you need yeah. to have that belief, or yeah. fortune favors the brave. Which belief do you want to embrace here? You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, um, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, Michelle, I'm I, I'll get you to put all those links in the chat. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, they'll be in the comments section as well. Uh, and one of the things that I ask uh, at the end is, what's the most um, important or, or some some sort of advice that you've been given that really stood out and I'm I'm wondering if that was it the that Robert Kiyosaki you know like that was that was great from a, a money perspective yep that's my favorite and then I've got a couple of others um I remember being a kid and was going through a really hard time and my auntie had uh, she was a, an artist and she made me this little quote book and with all these pretty pictures and it was a handmade thing and one of my favourites in there was that I always remember is this too shall pass. Yes. So um, that was one of mine. I got that from from someone. Oh, actually, it was when I did the Vipassana meditation. Yeah, this yeah. too shall pass. Yeah. Yeah. So I love reminding myself of that if if, if things aren't going too great. And I've got a my favourite um, uh, an A quote um, of. I, can't, I can never remember the exact wording, but the uh, the time came, then the time came when the pain of staying tight in the bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Yes. And with my surname being Bloom and my business name being Time to Bloom, I yeah. love that. I, yeah, I love yeah. That. It's like choose your heart, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's absolutely. Name and it's hard growing. Um, yeah choose hard at least at the, at the with the growing there's light at the end of the tunnel um, mm. yeah so I, I remember when I was a single mum and doing it really hard um and I I used to nearly have a panic attack sometimes going like you know you'd get paid and um and you'd freak out at even having to look at, you know what's 
what's in the bank account and how much, you know, how many bills you've got to pay and all that sort of stuff. And um, it was really interesting when I started, you know, creating a successful business that um, that um, uh, that activity or whatever you call it, you know, like that practice actually stayed even though I had money I I would find myself being concerned about like looking at my bank account and um and I recognized it as a pattern and so I shifted that by like regularly looking at how much money was in my bank account so I could break that pattern and um and it's it is it's the same you know if if there's a fear of your finances or your future, um, then those little patterns are the ones that you've got to look at and and start blooming, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So money loves attention yeah. and we get what we focus on. So by making that practice, um, yeah, it, it is part of the law of abundance. Like you were saying, you can't just, with um, manifesting an, an abundance, there has to be practical in there as well. You can't just sit there and say kumbaya and it's just going to forever come. Absolutely. And it yeah. has to, you know, um, be, be, uh, make each dollar work harder for you and things like that. And with my yeah. money mindset clients, I do a money tracking game to draw attention to that. And so yeah. we do, we do a, um, a tracking exercise for 60 days and then there's some games in there that we do that so you even have to record the zero. Yeah. And so then the goal is to reduce those number of zeros. So you don't leave a blank, you've got to put zero. And so you've got to reduce those number of zeros. And also to um, you might have certain um, number of days that income comes in. And it doesn't matter where it comes from, whether it be from a client or a tax refund or whatever it might be. And then you want to um, increase the number of days that income's actually coming in. And so we do all these little games and, and that sort of stuff, which is really cool because the more you're focusing on it and yeah. make, making it fun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I love that. Um, I love what you just said. Money loves attention. Mm. <laughs> it grows yeah. when, it, when it gets attention. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, women, like, and especially in the, the spiritual development, you know, arena, um, money is such a big topic. Um, of avoidance that somehow you know if if you're talking money that that somehow it's not a spiritual thing and and like you know one of the you know spiritual I'm a spiritual being having a physical experience right and you've got to remember that that the spiritual uh, sorry that the physical is just as important right you're here you're here and that's the way the world goes around so Thank this, you so much. I'll just finish with this, um, what you were saying then about that, um, about in the, the, the spiritual arena. So a, a lot of, you know, with my money mindset clients are coaches, healers and um, that sort of thing. And there's four of the most dangerous money mindsets, but the number one is, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it for the money. Yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the, the, the biggest, actually, most dangerous mindsets. And I see that mostly with um, coaches and spiritual and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and really, what they're doing by doing that is to reassure others and yes. themselves that they're not materialistic or greedy. Yeah. Um, that because if they were, they would therefore be less somehow, yes, as a, as yes, a, as a not have themselves. integrity or, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and it and it um you do hear it often. I pick my clients up as well on when they when they say things. I'm not doing it for the money or the money. The money is um is not you know uh, what's the other thing I heard someone say the other way? It's it's not important. I'm like really, you better make it important, <laughs> right? Like it is as part of the process, right? Mm, yeah. yeah. Cool, thank you so much michelle yeah, and yes. um and yeah i'm i've had my cat join us the whole time so she doesn't <laughs> usually do that <laughs> she wanted to hear all about money as well um take care and thank, thank you to you. anyone that's watching and um put hashtag replay if you've been watching the replay we always love um to acknowledge the people that have been watching as a replay because we often get people watching yep. and um we will catch up soon. Yeah, see you soon. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> see ya. See ya.